Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. In tonight's nightcap, I'm not going to be able to put in the stuff I wanted to put in. Basically, today I was supposed to be going to a steam rally, but the weather's absolutely atrocious. It's freezing cold. And it's never stopped raining all night, so that's been rained off. It is on tomorrow, so hopefully I'll be able to get there and get a little bit of video of that. I've got some builders here doing some building work. Well, it started yesterday. Obviously, they've been rained off. It's a total, it's a total washout outside. As you can see, the, the foundations for the new garden wall are under water. We just can't work in these conditions. An update on Debs. Debs is doing well, she's working. She's not working full time, which is going into work, helping out, which is great. Um, she has her last chemo session next Monday. Uh, so uh, we're hoping things after that are going to improve dramatically. I have been doing some work on the cooling tank on the Harrison Lear, I'll show you some of that. I put a video up earlier on today showing how I converted a three phase motor to run on single phase. You've probably already seen that. The Harrison lathe came with a big metal cooling tank on the back of the lathe. Uh, I've still got the tank. Unfortunately when it's on the back of the lathe I can't get access to it easily without pulling the lathe out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of these plastic containers. Mount the pump in there. I've got lids for them. It's nice. It's hard plastic, but it's not brittle plastic. It's just the right depth. And that will hold enough cooling water for what I need. I have wired the pump up so it'll run on 240 volt single phase. So I can use it on both machines, both the mill and the drill. The pump's going to go about there, so I need a hole cutting in the lid. Inside there's four black, there's four black lines. I need a circle cutting in there. So this plastic, it's, it's not the sort of brittle plastic, it should cut alright, I'm not quite sure I'm going to cut it with. The pump's going to go about there, so I need a hole cutting in the lid. Inside those four black, those four black lines. You need a circle cutting in there. See so this plastic? It's, it's not the sort of brittle plastic. It should cut all right. I'm not quite sure I'm going to cut it with. Reasonable. It's all the way out, and I still haven't got. I still haven't got enough. What I can do, I can put a, a bigger cutter in.
Oh, that looks better. That should do the job for her. I don't know what speed you put plastic on. Fairly slow, I would imagine. Somebody put an arrow for I'll use stainless nuts and bolts. That's going to make a nice, nice water tank. It'll probably hold two or three gallons. It'll be easy to keep clean. You know, I think the only reason we used the used metal water tank originally was because it didn't have plastic like this. So we've got a plastic pump, plastic tank. No problems at all with corrosion. I've got some real high spec soluble oil that I use on really expensive CNC machines. I'll use that. I used it for years on my box fat and I had no problems at all with it. That's going to live there between the, the lathe here and the mill machine. They'll both drain into it and the pipe will come off there, probably view that way around. That'll be at the back. And I'll just put a PCL connector on the end of the flexi pipe. One will go at the lathe and one will go to the mill. And this running on 240 volt means I don't need the rotary converter running to supply it with three phase. I do a bit of machining on the lathe, um, set the tailstock up so it's turning accurate, turning parallel between the tailstock and the headstock because it didn't have a slight taper. Right, we know for a fact that the lathe is turning the taper, so we need the tail stock lining up with the head stock. The idea way to do it is to put a bit of bar in and turn full length and then make it. Obviously, you're wasting a bit of bar and it takes a while to do a full length cut. So, what I'm going to do, I've got a bit of threaded bar, I'll centre the end, and I can put two nuts in a washer at each end, machine the washers, make them, and see they're the same size. Nice having a big hole from the headstock that wouldn't have went through me box for that don't think. Anyway, we'll square the end up, centre drill it, sort some washers out, machine the washers, make it up and see if we can get it turning through. <laughs>
doesn't matter how much the bar runs out, all I'm going to do is face the two washers, measure that washer and measure that washer and that will give me the taper in the end. That centre there is running dead true. Right, this end's five thou bigger. So that means the tail sock wants to come towards me two and a half thou. Reading the 18 on there. Twenty two on there, twenty one. So it's just a tear stock so it comes towards me. The way it works when you loosen your tear stock off, there's two allen bolts, one in there and one in there. There's a centre central bar in, and those bolts push against the central bar to push the tear stock this way or that way. I want it to come this way, so we'll tighten that one and that'll push against the bar and pull the tear stock to me which will make that washer smaller. The two bolts work once again one against each other. Zero that clock. Great, that's moved it. Do a lock it up, take another cut and try it again. Now we've got two thou taper on, so I want this to come towards me one thou. So what I'll do, I'll loosen the tail stock off and just tweak that a bit more.
within half a throw and they end up probably near our distance. But it's less than half a throw, it's absolutely spot on. Anyway, thanks once again for watching, thanks for clicking the like button, and thanks for all the well wishes that have come in from all over the world really regarding Deb's my wife. Ah, you bastard. <laughs>